and looking at the number of transactions over time and even the referrals from those people, it's unbelievable. I mean, our business has continued to grow as a result of our giving back, but not because we're asking, but because we're showing that we care, which is an amazing thing. Welcome to The Raquel Show. This show is for entrepreneurs who want to play bigger in business and in life. And today I have a very special guest that I met in a mastermind. One thing I absolutely love about this woman is not only has she built a very successful real estate business, she's also brought community together on a whole different level by giving back. So I want to welcome to the show, Ginger Walker. Hello. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you. I can't believe we haven't done this already. No. And I've been waiting for this <laughs> podcast. So I'm excited for the audience to get to know you. Tell the audience like what led you to where you're at or a little bit about you in a really quick snapshot. Sure. So um, I'm Ginger Walker. I'm a real estate agent in the Northern Virginia market. And I really sit right near Quantico where the Marines tend to blow some stuff up. That's, that's, I mean, that's really kind of where we are. So we're about 20 miles South of DC and I do run an all female real estate team. We're a small team and we're actually for our brokerage, the number one in the state of Virginia, which is pretty cool for the four years that we've been actually as a team. I've been a real estate agent since 2008. And before that, I was in big pharma for a long period of time before we started our family and moved from working in New York City down to the Quantico, Virginia area. So, and I believe in doing good things. That's really the core of who I am ever since I was little. And so all through my business, it's a passion for me to give back and really to raise women up and show them and help them become more aware of what they're capable of because as women, we can do so much more than we think we can or what we might have been told. And so I really want to be able to cause the ripple effect of kindness in the community and help women realize what their potential is. That's pretty oh, much me. so good. There's so much in that story. And first of all, congratulations on being the number one team that what an accomplishment. I know that that is not easy. So let's talk about this whole giving back concept. How did that start? Where did that come from? And I know that you said you've always wanted to do that since you're a, a kid, but now you got a business and that's one of your big purpose. It is. So, you know, I, it's all for my mom. My mom was the one from when I was very little. And I'll, I'll just say real short, when we had Christmases, my mom would say to me, listen, I want you to bring a toy to the tree before Christmas. And it has to be in really good shape. It has to be something you love playing with, not something you want to get rid of. And I want you to know that that's going to get passed on from Santa to another child that needs it more than you. And so that's really kind of where the, the giving heart came from. It was from my mom. Now, flash forward through business and pharmaceuticals. I mean, I always was charitable financially, but I also was charitable with my time and I would volunteer. I would help wherever there was a need. That was what I, I baked cookies for, you know, uh, raising money. I mean, I would do all those sorts of things. But once I got out of that and I moved to Virginia, I started in real estate completely by accident. It was not by design. And a friend of mine had said, listen, I'm starting a charity. It's called Fairy Godmother Project. And I need a basket for a raffle. And so from a community standpoint where I live now and tying it to real estate, it really started with a basket of stuff that was for a home. And that led into me becoming a board member on that with that charity. And I had decided that I was going to give a big percentage of my commission back to the charity of my client's choice. And so I started in 2008 in real estate when the market was just doing oh so well. <laughs> you know those times. Um, yeah. And, um, you know, I got the nickname. Someone gave me the nickname instead of just saying, hey, Ginger, hey, Ginger, give back girl. And so someone gave me the nickname and it kind of stuck. And so in 2019 or 2018, when I started the team, the natural progression was to go from give back girl to Ginger Walker and give back team. And so what we do is with the team, we give a donation back to the charity, the client's choice. But in addition, we give our time. So you know, we're right now today is the Carathon for Children's National Hospital. Today's the second day of raising money. And the goal is to, for the first time ever, tip over the million dollar mark. You know, so we were, we were part of 
you know, part of that and the backpack drive and fill Dr. Bear's closet. We're doing a toy drive right now and we pay for all the adoptions at the animal shelter. So it's kind of one of those cool things that it's just snowballed and evolved, but it's given me a very selfish thing, which is the opportunity to get to know more people in my community and make an impact, which is really what it's all about. Mm, That's so beautiful. You know, as you mentioned, all the things that you do, not only giving back your commission, because I think sometimes it's easy to give back money, but you also, and your team also donate time. So definitely thank you for that. What has been the biggest gift or thing that you're surprised by since you started the give back team with all the things that you guys have already accomplished? It's how much one small thing can impact someone else. So you would be surprised. And and this actually, it literally just happened yesterday. So we're in the process of doing for Children's National two things. We're doing Phil Dr. Bear's Closet, which is basically a toy drive. So anytime a child comes in, they get a toy. If it's their birthday, you know, if it's a holiday, if they've come in for an emergency reason and they don't have their favorite thing and it's for children of all ages. And so they had never done a toy drive before. So four years ago, I started that. In those four years, And being in the community and talking about it and the community now helping support us by donating toys also, I'm hearing the stories about, hey, you know what? I'm giving this doll because I remember when I was in Children's National, that's what I got on my eighth birthday. And you know what? I still have that doll. Or my daughter or my son was there. So it's hearing those little stories, and they're not really little. Obviously, they're hugely impactful for that person. But hearing those pieces of the impact of one little thing that you could do to change someone else's life or create a memory that puts a smile on someone's face or alleviates pain or a problem for a period of time. I would say that for us, that's truly the biggest impact that I've seen. And yesterday, the mascot for the radio station that I'm on, which is who we're partnering with for the the toy drive, He friended me on Facebook, which I thought was funny. (laughs) And he just sent me a thank you note. And he said, you know, I know you're on the radio and I know you talk about giving back. Our neighbor, you know, is, has been directly impacted by the hospital and thank you for doing the toy drive and you're amazing. And like that made me cry. (laughs) And I didn't know who this person really was because he's the B, like literally he's in a, a B costume. I'd never met him before. And I said to Melissa, one of my, my teammates, I said, wow, look at this. Like, How awesome is that, that it makes you feel like you really are making an impact even by doing something so small. I don't know if I answered your question. I hope I did, but that's one of those things that just kind of makes you feel so good about what you're doing. Yeah, you definitely did. I said, it's like, what has that, you know, all this giving back, what has that done for you and what has it done for your business? Obviously you just shared a story. Were you surprised that like this took off and what has it done for your business? So, you know, in giving back, I, I, I always say this, the intention, although it, it is part of our business, it is the team name. The intention is not to be in the public saying, here's the big check. We are doing this. We want your business. It is a result of what we're doing, but it's not ever something we ask for. In fact, when we're talking about charities, it's about the charity. It's not about selling real estate. As a result of doing these things, Have we gotten quite a bit of business? We have. And it's because people want to work with people that they, you know, we hear this all the time, know, like, and trust. And because we're helping support the community that needs support, they're supporting us too. And they're coming to us because they trust us. So, I mean, it it is unbelievable. And I track and measure everything I can. And so, you know, when I first started in 2008, maybe not so much, but I do absolutely now. And even people who've come to us that are volunteers for a charity, they've come to us for our help to help them buy or sell. It's interesting because people will also come to us and say, hey, I wanted to learn more about that charity. That's who I want our donation to go to. And we're moving here. Could you help us buy a house? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, when I look at the overall impact from a business perspective, it is greater than I could have ever expected. And looking at the number of transactions over time and even the referrals from those people, you know, that have come to us because of that, it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, our, our business has continued to grow as a result of our giving back, but not because we're asking, but because we're showing that we care, which is an amazing thing. Mm. 
you know, I know that if people are listening right now, they're probably going, how do I even start that? Cause that's a, such a beautiful story, beautiful thing, all the things that, and that was one story that you shared, but all the different things and all the different charities that you guys do give back to, how does one, if they were to start today, how does one start that? Or do you just say no. it and go, here we go. Here's a, a list of charities. Well, I think we were talking before, you know, and I, or maybe I, I, I mentioned that I gave a gift basket, right? Mm -hmm. So you start with something as small as that, but this is what I say to everyone. Everyone has a something. Mm -hmm. Everyone has a something. That's why we ask our, our clients, what is the charity that's near and dear to your heart? Because I can pick, you know, my mom passed ovarian cancer. I could pick the ovarian cancer, you know, fund that I actually send my charity, my charitable donations to, but I know that that might not be what's important to you. Mm -hmm. To you, it might be, you know, you adopted a, a dog as a result of PTSD and you're someone that's in the military, right? Mm -hmm. So that's a very, you know, specific charity. I want to support what's important to you. And so you can do that. You can start having the dialogue with your clients and say, you know what? I, I know we've gotten to know each other really well. I want to know what else is important to you. What is that something? And you can give to that something or you can give, you know, I see it at the bottom of, you know, people's signatures. I donate $25 to, you know, whatever charity with each closed transaction. So that's something you can do. Or you don't have to do anything financial because I mentioned time. Time is something that, yes, is super valuable and we can never get back, but it's equally as important in helping a charity because they might need your volunteer hours. They might need help with, you know, collecting something. They, they might just need some help, not necessarily just the financial support. So you can get started that way. If you have kids, go to their school, volunteer there. There's so many different things that you can do. And I actually have a whole list of stuff of like, you know, the financial things that you can be doing and the different ways to look at it versus the time or the physical things that you can be doing. But there's, if you really look at it, there's so many opportunities where you could get started. It's just, where do you really want to get started? And how do you want to do it? Do you want to do it financially time? Or do you want to do it with both? So good. And then on your team, since you guys are the gift back team, do you guys every single month pick or for the year going, here's where we're going to donate our time. Or there are certain charities that you guys have done years and years of being in business is there a process or a system on your team? Because it's such a big part of who you guys are. That's a great question. And I will say, you know, everyone, we're kind of coming into that time of year where people start thinking about giving, but giving is a need 12 months out of the year. Mm -hmm. It isn't just around Thanksgiving. It isn't just around the holidays. I mean, you know, a lot of times May, right? May, nobody thinks of donating in May or June. Everyone's thinking of going on their vacation, right? Where they're saving their money to go to Tahiti or someplace fun, you know, but that's probably when a charity might need you the most. So for us, the way that we've done it is we intentionally try not to do things in those months because that's when everyone else is doing it. So for us, we actually do a lot starting at the beginning of the summer and we start with the school system getting ready for school. So we do the back to school drive, fill Dr. Bear's closet. We start that in well before the school year starts. We do the coat drive, you know, there's a coat drive. So that's always a need because that kind of comes during the holidays, but also after, you know, so it's really one of those things where we don't necessarily do it by month. We do it by charity. And when they also have like their bigger events, when they have the need for the support, but I mean, there's always a need and it is 12 months out of the year. And that's the key for us is that we, we have families and we have lives too. And we want to be able to do client events during the holidays and things like that. So we really are conscientious of that too. And we want to make sure that we spread the love out of the whole 12, 12 months. months. Oh, so, I love it. I think it's really important to kind of keep that in mind that everyone is starting to come into that giving spirit, but you know, it's, it's a need all the time. It's just, you can, you can do something every single day, any month without it. Yeah. So I have to ask, is it a requirement when you have somebody joining your team that they have this as part of their value system? A thousand percent, a thousand percent, because we're a small team. We're all female and we're all dynamic and different, but we all have that sweet spot in our heart that we all want to help. And for me, that is the one of the most important things. We want to help our clients, right? Buy and sell houses. We want to help them achieve that goal. And we want to help the community. And 
we can tie those two things together. And for me, when I'm looking for someone to join our team, which I'm always, you know, looking and talking to people that that is a super important part because I don't want anybody to say, I don't want to do that. You know, I don't want to go help here. Or, you know, I have someone who's allergic to cats and she's still at the animal shelter on clear the shelter day, (laughs) you know, and she'll take, she'll dose up on Benadryl and she'll be there with a smile on and she'll try and help as best as she can and stay away from the cats. (laughs) So, you know, that's one of those things that for me, it's super important because that is part of our core values is to want to help give back and cause a ripple effect of kindness. And so, that is a key for me. If you want to join Give Back Team, you have to have that that in your heart and soul. I love it. And you talked about having your team as all women, and you are big on elevating women in business from what I read in your bio and knowing you. So what led you there? So I started in pharmaceuticals when I was in my early 20s. And my name is Ginger. (laughs) And with that name, a lot of people smile, which is great, but they might not always take me seriously because it's kind of, you know, one of those funny, fun names. And, and so in business, I mean, I thought I was going to go to law school. I ended up in pharmaceuticals, which was again, completely not by design, but it was the path I was supposed to take. So in sales, you know, I realized that I needed to prove who I was and what I was capable of doing. And it wasn't necessarily about how I dressed or what I look like, or right now I'm super hoarse, how I sounded. And so in pharmaceuticals, I realized that I wanted to do more and I had to overcome some of the things like the blonde, young, you know, single female with a name like Ginger, who always has a smile on her face. I wanted to be taken seriously. And so through that career of many years, I wore multiple different hats. I worked twice as hard to prove that I was worthy and I deserved to be sitting at that table. And in fact, not only the table I was sitting at, but the next one at the next level. And so for me, that was super important. And when I left pharmaceuticals, I left because it was my decision because I was starting a family with my husband. And it was either a lot of travel because I had left at a very high level at that point, or, you know, I had someone else that was helping me raise my kids. And that was a personal decision, which was really hard for me though. I was able to hire a lot of women. I hired men too. And I ran an entire region, the Northeast region for a big pharma company. And my counterparts were two guys. Those guys would go play golf. And you know what I did? I went home And I read books about how to be a better manager, how to be more effective leader, how to be able to help other people achieve their goals. And that was the motivating factor for me to continue to want to do that no matter what I did, no matter where I went, no matter who I worked with. And to this day, some of the women that I've hired still call me and ask me for advice and counsel. And I've been in real estate since 2008. I left pharmaceuticals right around 2001. So if that gives you perspective, and I started in the late nineties in pharmaceuticals. So I was doing, I was doing that for a long time and I probably have, well, not probably, I can tell you, I have 18 women from my pharmaceutical days that still call me for, for help, which I absolutely love. So that's my passion is I want women not to feel like I did when I started in pharmaceuticals at 23 years of age, that I didn't have someone, a female I could look up to in my, in my company or anyone that I knew in my industry that I could go to as a role model. You know, and for me, my mom was sick at that time. So it was hard to use my mom as my role model, although I always did and still do, but I really looked for someone who I could go to. And I, today, that's the role that I fill. And I want to continue to fill for other women that want to find their path of greatness. Mm. You know, I just can resonate with so much of all the things that you just said. And there's been a couple of times in this interview that you have said, you know, things didn't happen by design. And I would love to know, because I know Ginger is like, what has been the keys to your success? Because a lot of this like law school, real estate, like it wasn't by design. So what has been the keys to your success? I think when I I'm fast on my feet and I realized quickly that I loved working with people, I liked the books, you know, and, and, and I loved, I'm a political science major that's and a minor in French. Well, almost I missed it by one class, but 
I loved that part of it, but I loved working with people more. And so I realized quickly that anything that I could do where I was forward facing with someone that I could have an actual conversation with, as opposed to reading a book or, you know, coming up with strategy and not dealing with people, that was the first key to my success. And then realizing that I was able to sit at the table that I wanted to. It's just how I was going to figure out how to get there. And so I truly think that that was the key to my success is that realizing despite my name, despite the way I look, despite what I've been told, like, or asked questions I was being asked, like, you're not planning on having kids yet, are you? You're not getting married anytime soon, are you? As I'm going for an interview for a position, I realized, listen, I need to be smart about my answers and I need to understand the question. And I also need to understand where I want to go and have a roadmap to get there. So although nothing was truly by design, because it really wasn't the, the jobs, once I realized what I wanted to do, I was always looking at where I wanted to go and how I was going to get there. And I think that was truly and has been truly the success on how I've gotten to where I am. It's just, it's grit and it's understanding my purpose. I really think it's two, those two things. And my mom, my mom behind me, pushing me along. Mm, I love that. Uh, what has been the best thing that you've implemented so far this year in your business? Wow, that's tough because there's kind of a lot. <laughs> Maybe you know, top three. <laughs> well, I'm going to say that right now for this year, for the, this entire year, we implemented something new and it's from a giving back perspective and it's impacting 36 local charities, local charities. And every month we have three charities that the community has nominated and they vote, the community votes and every month, all three charities switch. And so for me, that is something that I've implemented. It has brought thousands of people to us in our database and in our, you know, getting to know them and them getting to know us. And selfishly, it's, it's helped me learn about charities like three miles down my street from my street that I didn't know about. But that program that we've implemented this year has created such an amazing result. And I'm not talking financially. I'm talking in the community that I would say that probably that is the number one thing that I've implemented this year that I've never done before. And it was strategic and it's still ongoing. And it's evolved as a result of some of the feedback and what I've learned into something bigger for even next year. Mm. So what's next for Ginger? What are you most <laughs> excited about that's coming? Well, I will say, you know, for me, everything comes back to my family. So family always comes first. And my team is also part of my family. But I'm excited because my husband's taking on a new role in his, you know, in his career. And we're living a little bit separate right now. So airplane rides are back and forth. But I am most excited about the opportunity for my kids because my daughter is in college. My son is now looking at colleges. And it is kind of that next phase of life and the what's next that I think I'm most excited about. And for the business side of things, because we're having people that are wanting to join us, it's what direction and where are we going to go next as a collective group of highly intelligent, amazing, smart, driven women where we're going to take our business to the next step, because there's something more that's going to be coming. I'm just not sure exactly what, but I have an idea. I have a vision for the next five years. So I'm excited for that too. I love it. Where can people connect with you, with Ginger Walker? By the way, I love the name. <laughs> <laughs> So um, probably the best place would be Instagram. If you just go to the real Ginger Walker and I'm the real Ginger Walker on everything, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and you can find me on YouTube too. But I'd say if you DM me on Instagram, that's the best place to find me. Love it. And as we wrap up, I always ask this one question to all of the people that come on the show is what does Ginger do to play bigger in business and in life? Read. I am a sponge. I read and I work. It's actually two. And I work with amazing mentors. If you have amazing people in your life that are going to help guide you, you can accomplish anything and everything that you want. So for me, it's reading and my mentors. What's your favorite book that you've read? So right now I'm actually reading What to Say 
by Phil Jones. It's, I think it's Phil Jones and it's the real estate uh, edition. So it's actually a little bit longer and it's got some great like ways to have conversations. So that's actually the book right now that is open on my table. I love it. Well, thank you so much, Ginger, for your time. I appreciate you. Thank you for being on our show. And I cannot wait to keep playing bigger with you, my friend. Thank you so much. I appreciate you too. 